great thou art. Well, I was going to start with a, a video of Walk This Way, you know, all the, you know, uh, but I'm not, so. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you, John. Let, let us pray. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable to you, O Lord, my rock and my redeemer. Amen. Well, here we are in week six of our series on spiritual affective disorder. You know that disorder that some folks get when they take their eye off Christ. Now, sometimes it can be uh, accompanied or uh, affiliated with, associated with the seasonal affective disorder, which most folks have probably heard of, that sometimes happens in these winter months. The winter season can, be, uh, can become dreary and unproductive. Feelings of depression and hopelessness accompany both disorders, the seasonal type and the spiritual type. But thankfully, there's hope for both. If you're feeling especially sad and out of sorts, I encourage you, see your physician. If you are feeling spiritually depleted, stay right where you are. You are in the right place today. So for six weeks, we've been talking about the various things that we can do to clear out the cobwebs in our spiritual practices and, and get back on track, living into the fullness of what Christ, God bless you, has called us forward. And we have tapped into the light of Christ and we have demonstrated a willingness to be different to seek God through our spiritual practices so that we can be our very best selves, so that Christ can live through us in everything we do. And we keep, thankfully, you all keep coming back every week to learn more because you desire to know God and to know that through the teachings of this sermon series, we all can realight or ignite our relationship with God and become the very best people that God created us to be. I think we've already realized that not doing anything isn't an option. If we aren't moving forward, if we aren't making progress, if we are stuck in our daily practices, we are in fact moving backwards. And so making the decision to be different really is the hardest decision that we'll make. And we know what, what is it that they say the hardest thing to do is admit that you have a problem? Well, dear sisters and brothers, we all have a problem. None of us are experts at creating and living to our spiritual best. Even those of us who do this and live this life 24-7, uh, we all have room for improvement. John Wesley, our Methodist founder, understood that when he shared that we are all growing in grace to perfection. Maybe you've heard that before. Not that we'll attain it, right? But that is our goal. That's what we are working for. We are striving for perfection, that perfect relationship with God through Jesus Christ. And we've learned that the power, through the power of music and laughter over the last few weeks, we had practiced uh, two weeks ago acts of kindness, and we learned that it is um, blessed to give and to receive. And then last week, I encouraged everyone to go home, not just the children, and create an altar in your home. And it delighted me to get the pictures from the kids' parents of their under-the-bed altars. So how did all of you do? You, you thought maybe I wasn't going to ask you, right? She asked the children. Is she going to ask us? Yes. How did you do? Did anyone go home and create a sacred space in their home? Right in front of the TV. Right in front of the TV. <laughs> I suspect yours had a bowl of chips, a nice tall cold beverage, and the football game. Football. That is sacred space. I'll buy that. Anyone else? Are you telling, oh, Samantha in the back. Nice. For those of you who, who maybe couldn't hear, Ashley took the things home and created her own space. I know Leisha uh, in their home has a, a little altar space. So Ashley did a separate one, which is lovely. I saw another hand. Scott. A 
excellent. So when you, when you walk by those spaces now, do you recognize, oh, that's holy ground. That's sacred space. Do you feel different now in your home, in your spaces, knowing that that little corner right there, that bookshelf, that table? Well, this week, we're going to discover the, phys the spiritual benefits of moving our bodies, of walking this way. Perhaps, really, it should be entitled, Walk Whatever Way Suits You Best. That's probably what it really should be called. It's vital that we move our body, not just for physical benefits, but for spiritual benefits as well. Now, let's start with the physical benefits. I have a video, Missy, uh, and I'm not promoting 24-hour fitness, just let's be clear, but this was an excellent video uh, about three and a half hours in moving our bodies. Our fitness. It's great to be working with people who have a passion for helping others achieve their individual fitness goals and promoting positive change in their lives. So I have a big interest in preventive medicine, you know, which can mean a lot of things from, you know, cancer screening to eating more fiber to having a good social network. And I, I mean that in the old sense of the word, but weighing less, drinking less, smoking less, controlling your blood pressure, cholesterol, and so on and so forth. So all these things are incredibly important and I wouldn't want you to uh, minimize your efforts in any one category, but I, I want to know what comes first. What, what, what has the biggest impact? What has the biggest return on investment? What makes the biggest difference to your health? Um, so I did my research and I, I found an answer, at least for me, and it's tricky because you know all these things are sort of overlapping, uh, but I picked up this intervention and because of its breadth, uh, it worked for so many different health problems and that's what I found so cool about it. So just to kind of walk you through a quick list, so this intervention uh, in patients with knee arthritis who receive one hour of treatment three times a week reduced their rates of pain and disability by 47%. In older patients, it reduced progression to dementia and Alzheimer's by uh, around 50%. For patients at high risk of diabetes and coupled with other lifestyle interventions, it reduced progression to frank diabetes by 58%. Following over 10,000 Harvard alumni for over 12 years, those that had the intervention had a 23% lower risk of death than those who didn't get the treatment. It's the number one treatment of fatigue and of course the kind of outcome of choice there, my favorite outcome is quality of life, which is really all of the above and, and really about making your life better. And this treatment has been shown over and over again to improve quality of life. So the question is, what's the, what's the medicine and, and what is 23 and a half hours? So the medicine was exercise, mostly walking, so not triathlons. And, and let me just put it a different way. I, I think what I'm um, asking you to do is if you think about your typical day, so there's 24 hours, and so you might spend most of your day, you know, this varies obviously, but uh, you know, couch surfing, <laughs> sitting at work, obviously sleeping. And what um, the evidence that I'm gonna show you kind of tells me is the best thing you can do for your health is to spend half an hour being active, maybe an hour, and that uh, if you can do that, you can realize all the benefits I described in the previous slides. So if exercise is a medicine, what's the dose? So when I think of, of, of dose, I think of how long, how often, and how intense. I'm gonna give you a slightly mixed message, but essentially uh, more activity is better. But I must say the rate of return seems to decline after 20 or 30 minutes a day. So if you're being active less than 150 minutes a week, or, or more if you're a kid, an hour a day if you're a kid, my flag goes up in the clinic. So my personal take on this is that, um, you know, literature draws a very broad brush, uh, and so we see big differences when somebody goes from not doing anything to doing something, and after that, the return is more granular. So if we took the nurse's health study, woman who went from zero activity to just one hour a week uh, reduced their heart disease rates by uh, almost half. So you can break it down, so it can be 10 minutes, 10 minutes, 10 minutes, if you want to do uh, 30 minutes of exercise, so it can be broken into three. If you're only gonna do it if it's pre-booked with friends, you know, I have couples that take a half hour walk every morning or evening to organize their life. A dog is a great uh, walking coach. Uh, the data is showing 67% of dog walkers achieve 150 minutes a week just with the dog walking. And finally, of course, your commute, you know, getting off stop early, taking the stairs, and so on and so forth. The next way to think about it is the reverse. So what I call sitting disease. 
We know that being sedentary is bad for your health, but uh, a researcher named Leonard Bierman uh, wanted to quantify this, and he did so down in Australia in a big study they did there. They found compared with persons who watch no TV, those that spend a lifetime average of six hours a day watching TV can expect to live about five years left. I mean, that's incredible. But then I think, oh, who watches six hours a day of TV? <laughs> Uh, it turns out the average adult in the USA spends about five hours a day uh, watching TV or screens. So I, I, I find this fascinating that um, we never think of the TV as uh, something that's bad for our health, but clearly it's as powerful as many other risk factors for chronic disease. So I'm going to finish by asking you a question, and this may have some personal challenges for you. So you know, you may be very busy with work or kids or both, and you, or you may be uh, in pain or have other priorities, but. Um, um, my question to you is, can you limit your sitting and sleeping to just 23 and a half hours a day? So, whether it's hitting the gym and attaining fitness goals, or walking the dog, or taking the stairs, get out there and be active. Thanks again to 24 Hour Fitness for bringing you this message. What do you think? Did you have any idea? Uh, it, was, it astounded me when I first learned of the, the 30 minutes a day and, and the breadth of health differences and improvements, decreasing risks and all sorts of diseases. Well, how do you think exercise impacts our spiritual being? What spiritual benefits can we expect from being active? Well, our scripture talks about walking in God's way and observing God's commandments, decrees, and ordinances. Properly walking in God's way leads to feeling blessed. We are to keep focused on God and on his ways it happens when we are properly walking with God and following Jesus teaching to love God and love one another. Walking in the, the path of Christ keeps us happy, blameless and allows us to make right choices. Well, what if physically walking could help with the spiritual walking? Now, the spiritual benefits from exercise could be as simple as you can stay awake in the sermon, right? Those who exercise get better sleep, and better sleep means you're more awake for the day. And being more awake helps you focus your energy when I tend to get a little boring. Not that that ever happens. Perhaps you're able to stay awake all the way through the sermon instead of just that beginning part and the end part because you know the middle part right now, this is the meat, right? This is the best of the sermon. Well, let's look at four other benefits besides that obvious benefit of spiritual benefit of exercise. So the first, healthy body, healthy mind, healthy spirit. You've probably heard that before. The body, mind, spirit is undeniably intertwined. And when we are spiritually deprived, our body and mind feels the effects. And when we're physically hyped up, we are also mentally and spiritually hyped up as well. In Luke 10, 27, Jesus commanded us, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength, and with all your mind. And when our whole being loves God, we grow in every aspect, especially the spiritual. Now the second benefit, spiritual benefit of exercise is the discipline and exercise. That discipline and exercise expands to everything. So when you are disciplined in exercise, they find you're disciplined in other things. It trickles down to every part of our lives. People who are disciplined physically are disciplined financially, relationally, and spiritually. An increase in physical discipline can directly boost your spiritual discipline. The third spiritual benefit of exercise is having more focus and more energy. A study of over 6,800 folks showed that exercise significantly decreased their levels of fatigue. So when we focus more and have more energy to do things, we can do more things, right? What if we actually had more time for our spiritual development, more so than perhaps our career, our relationships? What if we took this increased energy and focus and took more time to study the Bible, to worship God, 
to serve others in our community as a means to refresh ourselves. And the last spiritual benefit of exercise is using exercise and good health as worship. Have you ever thought of exercise as worship? Well, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 is a good reminder, and it says, uh, or do you not know that your body is a temple of the Holy Spirit within you, whom you have from God? You are not your own. And because our bodies are God's temple and the Holy Spirit dwells within us, it only makes sense that we should be caring for it. And when we care for our bodies by being pure and keeping ourselves healthy, we are, in fact, worshiping God. Now, walking can be a great exercise for all of us, a great option for most. It, it gets us outdoors. It gets us into a space where we can appreciate God's creation. Walking can help us clear our minds, and it promotes problem solving. We have a, a walking group, for those of you who may not be aware, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, 8 o'clock, is that right? 8 o'clock? If you need more information, Pat's our girl. She's our walking queen. If you have a smartphone, you can listen to podcasts on spiritual topics. I, when I walk, I listen to the Bible on tape and, and listen to the scripture as I go. Or we learned a few weeks ago the benefits of music and listening to music while you walk will inspire you. Two years ago, I began practicing yoga. I had intuitively known for years that it was something that I needed. I'm not sure how I knew that. I would say Holy Spirit just kept nudging me and nudging me and and finally i said ah, fine i'll do it and what i learned was that yoga means union with god it has helped me to be more conscious of god and my connection with the holy spirit yoga feeds both my physical body and my spiritual body and i feel a connection to the divine when i'm at the yoga studio Yoga, for me, has become a time of worship. Now, walking and yoga are just two of the many things that we can do. And if you're thinking, well, gee, Pastor Sandy, that sounds great, but I'm just not sure I'm up to walking for 30 minutes or attending a yoga class. Well, I encourage you, even a short amount of exercise, a 10-minute walk, as the, the video said. I know also that the Senior Center offers a yoga class three times a week, and many of the folks in that yoga class do it from their seat. That's what they can do. It's important, dear ones, to keep our physical and spiritual selves at our best because they are woven so tightly together. So, you know, through this series, I've been giving you assignments, right? What do you think your assignment is? Exercise. <laughs> you're all sorry you're here today, aren't you? Why does she do this to us? Because she loves us. Because I love you dearly. So take one and pass it. And I've given you many, 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 many options. So take a walk around your neighborhood. If you can't manage 30, start with 5 or 10 or 15 minutes and, and see if you can work your way up. Go to the gym. I know a bunch of you go out to the gym, over to the rec center and, and exercise. Attend Monday's yoga class with Kathleen. I know she uh, does um, uh, offers chair as well. And, and if you're not aware, the donations, it's a donation-only yoga class at noon here. And all the donations go to emergency aid. Um, Kathleen Wood, do you remember how many, how much has been donated so far off the top of your head? Three and four thousand dollars uh, in the last six or eight months since she started it has been donated. Um, park a little farther away from the front door and, and get a couple extra steps. Take your dog for a walk. Go dancing with your partner. I saw some dancers here today. Or go outside and weed your garden. That is a beautiful way to get exercise as well. And continue all of the other spiritual practices that we have been uh, learning through this series. And with that, I say amen.